Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on translation, which is one of our four transformations. Remember, a transformation is a process which can change the position and or size of a shape. In mathematics, we have four transformations, rotation, enlargement, and it's important to note with enlargement, it doesn't always make the object bigger. It can sometimes make it smaller. We also have reflection and translation. And today's tutorial will be looking at translation. So, what do we mean by translation? Well, translation is a movement of a shape given a vector. A translation does not change the size or the orientation. Just like we translate in language, translate means we move or slide. So from one language to another, we're translating the word hello into Spanish because we're moving the word into another language. So translation is basically a movement. So what is a vector? Well, a vector is the instruction we need to move our shape. The number on the top tells us to move left if it's negative or right if it's positive. And the number on the bottom tells us to go up if it's positive or down if it's negative. So let's look at some examples to explain. Here we have a vector 3, 5. You'll notice the number on the top is a positive 3, so therefore we're moving right 3. The number on the bottom is a positive 5, so therefore we're moving 5 up. Looking at another example, we have the vector minus 2 and 1. This means we're moving 2 to the left and 1 up. Because the number on the top is negative, so we're moving left, and the number on the bottom is positive, so we're going up. In this last example, we have 6 minus 2. Well, this means 6 to the right and 2 down. So, in summary, a translation is a movement just like a word moving from one language into another language. We use vectors in translation to instruct if we're moving our object left or right and or up or down. Like in this example where we use the vector 6 minus 2 to instruct the movement 6 right and 2 down. So now we know the meaning of translation. It's important to note there are two types of translation questions in our exam describing and instruction. In both cases, it's important to understand the notation associated with vectors. So, let's look at our first exam question where we're asked to describe. Here the question wants us to describe the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. This exam question is worth two marks, so it's important that we state two things. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. The exam question was very clear with stating we need to identify only one of our transformations out of the four. We can clearly see its translation as it's a simple movement from A to B. There is no change in size or orientation. So writing translation will get us our first mark. The second mark is identifying the vector. So let's look at each corresponding vertex from shape A to shape B. Remember, when writing our vector, we need to go left or right first, then up or down. So let's start with our top corner on shape A. Here you can see I've gone 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3 down. I'm going to check with another vertex, the top right. Here you can see I've gone 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3 down. So my second mark is the vector 4 minus 3 because we went 4 to the right and 3 down. This gets us our 2 marks. Moving on to our next exam question, here the question asks us to describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle Q onto triangle P. This question is worth 2 marks, so we need to state two things. 
See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Just like before, we need to state the single transformation from shape Q to shape P. Well, you can see it's translation because it's a movement from our shape Q to our shape P. There is no change in size, nor is there a change in orientation. So we get one mark for identifying translation. Our second mark is identifying our vector. Remember, we need to go left or right first and then up or down when looking at our corresponding vertices. So, starting with shape Q, let's count up to the corresponding corner to shape P. Well, here you can see we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left and 1 up. I'm just going to verify with another vertex. Here we've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left and 1 up. Therefore, our vector is minus 6 and 1. This gets us our two marks, one for translation and the second for our vector. Now let's have a look at a different type of translation question that you can get in an exam. Here the question wants us to translate the triangle by the vector minus 3, 2. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by looking at our vector. Well, we have minus 3 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. So this means 3 to the left and 2 up. So now let's look at each vertex at a time. From this vertex, we're going to move 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, and 2 up, 1, 2. So now my new corner has been translated to this position. Now let's have a look at another vertex. Here, I'm moving 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, and 2 up, 1, 2. So this is the position of our next vertex. Finally, let's have a look at our last vertex. Here we're moving 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, and 2 up, 1, 2. This will give us the last position of our triangle, so we can draw our shape from here. And we successfully translated our triangle using the vector minus 3, 2. So let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Here the question shows a grid and we're asked to translate shape A by the vector 6 minus 5 and label the new shape B. We're then asked to translate shape B by the vector minus 8, 8 and label the new shape C. Finally, we're asked to write down the column vector for the translation that maps shape A onto shape C. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's start by identifying what the vector 6 minus 5 means. Well, this means 6 to the right and 5 down. So looking at each vertex at a time, we're going to go 6 to the right and 5 down. Starting here, I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Choosing another vertex, I'm going to go 6 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 5 down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You do this for each vertex until you see your new shape, which we're going to label shape B. Now, the next question wants us to use shape B and translate it by a vector of minus 8, 8. So let's understand what the vector means. Well, this means 8 to the left and 8 up. So choosing each corner at a time, we're going to go 8 to the left and 8 up. Starting here, I'm going to count carefully, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
and this is the position of our new vertex. Picking another vertex, we count carefully, 8 to the left, and then 8 up, until we plot our next vertex. We do this for every other vertex until we can see our shape being formed. This is what we need to label as shape C. Finally, the last question wants us to identify the column vector or the vector for the translation that maps shape A to shape C. Well, let's count carefully again, understanding a vector must have the number on the top being left or right and the number on the bottom being up or down. Choosing a vertex, I'm choosing this one, I'm going to count. 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3 up. I'm going to choose another vertex just to check. 1, 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3 up. So therefore, the vector which translates shape A onto shape C is minus 2, 3, which means 2 to the left and 3 up. So, in summary, we've looked at translation being one of our transformations, identifying translation as a movement which does not change the size or the orientation of a shape. We also recognize the importance of vector notation when describing a translation. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.